Hello friends, welcome again to this session on part 2 of shock wave analysis. In the first part of this topic, we discussed the basic concept of shock wave and how these waves are generated along a highway. You can find the link of part 1 in the description box and I would advise you to watch the first part before you go to this session. In this part, we will discuss shock waves at a traffic signal. But before that, let us brush up our understanding on shock wave. As I told you in my first part also, shock wave is similar to the wave produced by dropping a stone in water. When you drop a stone in the pool of water, waves are generated and these waves travel with certain velocity. Same is the case with traffic flow. Whenever a disturbance is created in the traffic stream, then shock waves are generated and these waves travel either upward or downward depending upon the nature of disturbance. Shock wave originate from a sudden and substantial change in the state of the traffic flow. It means a shock wave is defined by a discontinuity in the flow density conditions in time space domain. It is generally a byproduct of traffic congestion and it is backup or queuing of vehicles as a result of a sudden decrease in roadway capacity. Now this decrease in roadway capacity may be because of lane closure or because of red light or accident or incident or because of slow moving vehicle. In first part, we discussed how a shock wave is generated along a highway when the traffic stream encounters a slow moving vehicle. In this part, we will discuss how shock wave is generated at traffic signal. There are generally three types of shock waves. One backward propagating, which you can observe behind a signal. Another is forward propagating, which you can observe beyond a signal when traffic light turns green. Or it may be a stationary shock wave also. A stationary shock wave occurs when two streams having the same flow value but different densities meet or when two streams having the different flow values but same densities meet or it might also occur when two streams having the same flow value and densities meet. Now you consider a highway where vehicles are traveling at some speed and for simplicity let us assume that all vehicles are traveling at same speed. Now the time space diagram for these vehicles will be parallel lines and slope of each line will be the speed of the stream. Now this stream meet a signal control intersection along the highway and let us assume that the first vehicle will reach the stop line and will face the red light at time t is equal to 0. At t is equal to t1 another vehicle will join this queue and it will continue. The vehicles will continue to join the queue and a platoon will be built up behind the stop line because these vehicles are standing behind the stop line so a spacing will be minimum and density will be equal to the jam density. The queue will grow behind the stop line and a shock wave will be generated. Now this was the state one when vehicles were traveling without having knowledge of traffic light all lines of their trajectory are parallel. When red light is encountered, all vehicles will stop and this is what we call stage 2. So in stage 2, all vehicles are queuing up behind the stop line. 
when traffic light turns green then vehicle at stop line will start moving and the first vehicle will start and all other vehicles will follow so these vehicles will be moving at very low headway very less headway and they will be moving at the section capacity beyond the traffic signal if you see the flow density curve of a stream this is the point a when the vehicles will traveling without having any knowledge of traffic signal so a speed here is let us say u a now behind the stop line the all vehicles are standing at jam density and therefore this is the point b and when traffic light turns green the vehicles start moving at section capacity and this is the point c so a to b will result in forming a shock wave at a velocity u a b and from b to c it will result in clearing of shock wave at velocity b c so slope of line slope of line ab will be qb minus qa upon kb minus ka and you can refer part 1 of shock wave analysis to know how this was derived now here the flow at b that is qb is zero and density is jam density and therefore this will give you a negative value of the slope negative slope means it is moving upward up stream now slope of line bc ubc will be qc minus qb upon kc minus kb and here again this is the flow at capacity and this is the flow at jam density that is zero and kc is the half of jam density and kb is naturally the jam density so this slope will also be negative uab and ubc both have negative slopes that means they are moving upstream but you should remember that the starting wave velocity should be much larger than the stopping wave velocity and starting wave velocity is when traffic light turns green and this wave will overtake this stopping wave at a velocity of ubc minus ua that is relative speed between two waves you can see here this is a steeper slope this is the mild slope so this velocity is much larger than this velocity so if you estimate the length of the queue let us assume that red time is r then queue length will be red time multiplied by the shock wave speed ab and number of cars in the queue will be this length multiplied by the jam density that is r into uab into jam density kj and this time this q will require time t to dissipate and that can be calculated from this equation that length of q divided by relative speed of two shock waves that is r into uab that is the q length divided by ubc minus uab but one thing we should remember that when traffic light turns green the first vehicle starts from the stop line it does not mean that the platoon or the queue dissipates immediately the vehicles from up upstream will continue to join the queue and that will that will continue till the last vehicle in the queue clears the stop line and that is what we call the reach of the queue so to to get the reach of the queue multiply this by a speed of traffic stream beyond the signal and that is uc so this factor multiplied by uc that is a speed at capacity and this is the 
speed this is the half of free speed so this will be the q reach to make it more clear how shock waves are analyzed at a traffic signal let us take one example where it is given that the relation between speed and density follows green shield equation u is equal to 8 u is equal to 100 minus 0.8 k the vehicles meet a traffic signal at a flow of 1000 vehicles per hour if the red time at the signal is 80 second estimate these three parameters the speed of stopping and clearing shock wave what is the maximum q length and distance the q length will reach this can be solved in the manner i explained in earlier part of this session let us first calculate what is the density at this flow now this is the flow of 1000 vehicles per hour before traffic signal so if you use this equation q in is equal to k into u and u is k u is 100 minus 0.8 k and if you solve this equation quadratic equation then k is 10.96 vehicles per kilometer so for state 1 before traffic signal the q1 is 1000 vehicles per hour and k1 is 10.96 vehicles per hour after reaching the traffic signal the q2 becomes zero because all vehicles stop and q2 will k2 will become the jam density so what is jam density by this equation if you put u is equal to 0 here you can find out jam density 125 vehicles per kilometer therefore for stage 2 that is the q standing behind the stop line the flow is zero and k2 is equal to jam density that is 125 vehicles per kilometer so this is the point 1 when the vehicles were traveling without knowledge of traffic signal at a flow of 1000 vehicles per hour and this is point 2 when vehicles are queuing up behind the stop line at jam density the speed of shock wave 1 2 will be q2 minus q1 upon k2 minus k1 q2 is 0 and that gives you minus 8.77 km per hour it is the speed of the so first shock wave 1 2 after traffic light turns green q will be q maximum here and you can find out what is q maximum if free flow speed is 100 jam density is kj that is 125 vehicles per kilometer then q max will be half of free flow speed multiplied by half of jam density that is 3125 vehicles per hour so for state 3 q3 is 3125 and k3 is 62.5 so a speed of shock wave 23 would be minus 50 km per hour this is also negative that means it is also going backward now this is the answer to first question that is speed of stopping shock wave is minus 8.77 km per hour and speed of clearing shock wave is minus 50 km per hour the second part is what is the maximum q length maximum q length is given by red time multiplied by velocity of platooning shock wave so 80 second multiplied by 8.77 km per hour and therefore you have to divide by 3600 to get distance in kilometer that is 0.195 km and time required to dissipate this plateau will be the maximum q length divided by relative speed of two shock waves that is 0.15195 divided by 50 minus 8.77 that is 0.00473 hours the third question is the distance q length will reach and this will be this time multiplied by speed of shock wave 2 3 so 
This is 0.00473 into 50, 0.236 kilometer or 236 meter. So that is how shock wave is analyzed behind the stop line at traffic signal. So friend, in this session we have learned basic concept of shock waves in traffic flow, what are different types of shock waves and how these shock waves propagate behind a traffic signal and how they move after signal turns green. In the next session, we will discuss general theory of propagation of shock waves. Thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions in the comment box and subscribe to my channel. If you have any topic to be discussed in this session, please do write to me.